Oh, today I'm going to invite audience participation. And that is, um, I'm attempting to figure out just what it is that Kirk Erdl meant when he spoke of circular motion at relativistic speeds leading backwards in time. Uh, there's a dearth of information about it on the internet. Uh, there are all kinds of odd sources uh, on, on the internet about time travel and uh, various sort of more new age leaning theories about it. But I want to go to the mainstream science. Um, mainstream scientists have tended to dismiss Gödel's equations, although Einstein was convinced that they did line up with his theory of relativity, that circular motion at relativistic speeds would and could lead backwards in time. Uh, but, but most mainstream scientists have tried to get around that, invoking various principles to refute Kurt Gödel, and obviously, according to quantum physics, you have the uncertainty principle, and that seems to suggest one arrow of time, backwards to forwards. And then you have the more general concept of the second law of thermodynamics, and that definitely would lead to one arrow of time. However, uh, what I'm trying to really figure out is more the mathematics of what Gödel meant. And I have something that I think probably fits what it is that he meant. However, um, yeah. You don't want your paper falling on the floor in the middle of a presentation like this, that's for sure. So, uh, here, here's what I think he might have meant, and I invite, especially those of you who've disagreed with me in the past or think that you know, I'm way off base, this is your chance to completely tell me that I'm off base, because once again, you know, I want, um, I want to be accurate here, and I'm more than willing to redo this video in order to be accurate. Let's start off... Um, with what we all agree upon. This is Einstein's time dilation equation. And, uh, oh, by the way, if my speculation is correct, then I'm thinking that Gödel would, would might not only, that Gödel's equations would not only lead to time travel, but through a strange byproduct, anti-gravity. But that's neither here nor there. Okay, so t prime is equal to t over the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. Uh, if V were greater than C, which it can't be under Einstein's relativity, uh, T becomes imaginary, and you know we don't want an imaginary value for time, so bottom line is C is greater than V. End of discussion. No physicist worth their salt disagrees with Einstein's relativity. Uh, Newton's universe is not wrong, it's superseded. That's very important. Newtonian physics is not wrong, it's superseded for uh, there's a difference between the, the two, okay? And so uh, if we're going to talk about circular motion at relativistic speeds, we have our Newtonian equations, which is that A is equal to V squared over R. But I have difficulty finding out what the relativistic equation for that is. That must have been what Kurt Gödel was using, and, I, and that's why I'm going to post uh, what I believe that it is, but what I want is for some brilliant physics student to point out that I'm incorrect and so I can redo this because if I'm right then it leads to some very interesting things that well might lead to some weird technology that might be best left avoided but anyhow um, so let, let's prove me wrong uh, V at relativistic speeds in circular motion uh, I never really get used to this that's uh, like that uh, no, the other way okay we'll make it clockwise circular around a, a, a will be the observer at the point. Okay. Um, it, it, if As V approaches relativistic speeds, uh, the centrifugal direction, um, meaning the direction in leading 90 degrees uh, away from the radius, of, you know, the 90 degree vector to normal at the right angle to our radius, you know, in other words, the line leading away from the circle, uh, time there is affected through time dilation, but time is not affected in the centripetal direction. In other words, the, in the motion of the centrifugal force, we have time dilation, but we don't have it in the motion through the center of the circle. I think that's, hopefully I stated that correctly and, and succinctly. So X arrives, now here's the weird thing. Our velocity cannot be faster than light, but from the standpoint of the denizens aboard our spaceship, traveling around in the circular motion, not from our standpoint in the middle here, because we're not traveling at super fast speeds, but from the standpoint of the, the denizens of the spaceship here, they're arriving at the other side of this circle before the light beam does. 
So they're not traveling faster than light, but from their standpoint, they're arriving at the other side before the light beam does, and so there's a kind of simulation, almost like a simulacra here of, of faster than light travel, without really there being faster than light travel, because if there was, you'd have an imaginary arrow of time. Well, how could this possibly be? Now, this is what I don't quite understand. And that's where um, I'm going to go to speculation because I don't know Gödel's actual equations. Uh, I imagine Kurt Gödel would be on a level far beyond most of us and he would see... Uh, I can't find the equations for Einstein's uh, circular motion, for relativistic circular motion that would make sense according to this. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and say, all right, if we were to take the actual ratio of t prime squared, if we were to square both sides of our initial equation here, okay, we'd have t prime squared is equal to t squared over 1 minus v squared over c squared. Then we set it up as a ratio, t prime squared over t squared is equal to 1 minus v, 1 minus v squared over c squared. And that would be some negative number if v actually were greater than c. So you would have the ratio of the squares of the times would in fact be negative. Now, uh, that still doesn't change our imaginary arrow of time, but if we looked at it from the standpoint of acceleration, um, change of d over the change of t squared, then we would have a ratio of accelerations that would be some negative number. So, it, it, and in a sense, acceleration in this context um, could be applied to gravitational force. In other words, um, Negative acceleration is very similar, in a sense, to anti-gravity. Um, if I were, uh, and this is the odd thing, but in, if I were to look at acceleration and gravity, well, they're kind of the same, they're, they're exactly the same thing, and then you have negative acceleration, it would correspond to anti-gravity in the sense that, it would, here, here's, what, here's my, the way I'm thinking of it. Kurt Gödel said backwards in time motion. I don't know what he means. I can't find the equation. But my best speculation on it would be that in relativity, gravitation and time are very much linked. Um, you have one arrow of gravitation. You have one arrow of time. Um, gravitation is also the curvature of space-time in the sense that as you pass through the event horizon of a black hole, not even light can escape. So in some sense... The event horizon of a black hole itself would be the, the, the equivalent of the speed of light and then faster than the speed of light, even though no such thing is really possible. You've bent space-time beyond uh, uh, e even light itself escaping. So what would be the only way out of a black hole? Well, that would be backwards in time. Uh, it's, it sounds very strange, but the only way you could possibly pass the other direction through the event horizon of a black hole is if the arrow of time itself were to reverse. So if I were to speculate uh, what I think Gödel might have meant, um, you have in a sense a negative acceleration, which uh, again the equation for for acceleration would not be v squared over r, I don't believe. You would have some other formula that would apply. However, the negative acceleration would be roughly equivalent to negative gravity, which would also be equivalent to time travel backwards in time. That uh, the three concepts are linked in relativity. Now, I could be way off on this, and that's why I'm appealing to my usual audience of very bright scientific people to help me. And when you do help me, I will redo this video and make a better one. Uh, but as of now, this is more of an appeal for assistance than it really is uh, an actual definitive video on the subject. Now, I'd like to be, you know, if if backwards in time travel and anti-gravity are possible, then we would have, through relativistic circular motion, we would have a problem reconciling that with quantum theory. We would have a problem reconciling that with thermodynamics. We would also, though, if it were, now maybe you could posit multiple universes and that type of thing that, that could be possible. But finally, if it were technology freely available, you know, we might... Um, I could understand the government keeping it secret. In fact, I would agree with that. So anyways, thank you.